Hello everybody, it's uh, Taking Grace with the next video in the series. Uh, this is actually a re-record uh, of this video, so uh, you might see a few things in here that we haven't done yet. Uh, I'll point them out as we go so it's not confusing as to why you don't have some of the nodes that I have. But uh, anyways, in the last video today, or pardon me, in the last video we worked on the inventory slot for the use quick use item right here. And that's what it looks like right there. So we're going to have... Uh, our item appear in the inventory slot after we've picked one up so we will work on that in this video and let's get started here so we'll close out of that uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our HUD class which is in our UI folder and we're gonna make a bunch of variables okay uh, I've already made all these variables cuz again this is a re-record uh, so you will want to make uh, the following here so you want uh, item current item data which will be our struct of item data You'll want filled slot, which will be an item array. So just remember to click on it and come up here and change it to an array. Uh, and that'll be our struct for our item slot. Uh, we also want another um, S item slot, which will be a single instead of an array. So just click over here, grab that guy. And that'll be called new item. We'll need two indexes. Uh, so I'll explain how all this is going to work here in a second. But uh, you'll need two, one called slot item index and one called use item index. Um, you will need one called, another index called, uh, pardon me, an integer called current quantity, and then you'll need a boolean called item cooldown active. Okay, that's what we'll need. So I'll just explain a little bit of what's, uh, what we're doing in this video. So obviously, um, just better to have a visual. So we'll have this item slot. So we need to, first of all, if I pick up all of these items... Uh, we have 24 item slots, and now I have uh, four item slots filled, but 20 vacant. So we don't want to cycle through all of these vacant item slots. So we need to create a second array that's going to basically remove all of these empty item slots and only give us these filled ones. So then we can loop through, and then in the next video we'll make a uh, macro that's going to loop us back to the beginning or to the end if we get all the way through. So we can just endlessly cycle through them. Um, the two item slots that I mentioned, the use item slot and slot item index. Oh, I sp spelt it undex. I better fix that before the comment section lights me up here. All right. Anyway, so the difference between these two, so the slot item index is going to be the actual item in this slot. So when we push X, uh, to use our item, it, we're going to use this particular item that's in our slot. However, later on, we're going to add the functionality of using items in our inventory, uh, separate from our use item slot. So, for example, if I have this apple um, as our my main item, which it shouldn't be right now, but we'll fix that later. Um, if I wanted to use this piece of wood, for example, I, I can right-click and then go use item, and then the game is going to know to use this piece of wood and not my slot item. So that's why we need to have two indexes. For this guy, um, one way I like to keep my event graph cleaned up um, is to use basically subgraphs like this one here. Uh, so this is the one I'm going to go into, but uh, essentially, uh, you know, I've done two videos since then, or sorry, two other things in this video video series since, and you can see that my event graph is pretty cleaned up, and that's because I keep hiding everything inside event graphs. Like this is a this will be one we'll do in a later video here, but yeah. So. In order to make one of those, um, first thing, just draw, drag out your BP player, get him, and right-click and go collapse nodes. And then it'll make a little event graph just like this. And you can hit F2 and rename it to whatever you need to. And we're going to do that here. And the reason we're collapsing this into a graph and not making it a function is because we have a, a bunch of time-based nodes that we need. And inside functions, you can't create custom events you can't create timelines you can't create delays you can't create anything time-based i'm assuming because we don't want things running out of order outside any of these execution wires that's just my best guess i don't know if that's the actual reason or not okay uh yours won't have an execution pin so you just drag the execution pin out and then drag it and you'll see it says add pin to nodes so that's all you need to do to uh add that execution pin and then you can click on it and rename it up here all right, uh, let's go into item management. Uh, all of this stuff on screen right now is all next video stuff. So um, this is this will be the actual directly the next video where we're going to get our next array item and previous array item to be able to cycle through. Uh, we are going to use this custom event, but uh, we will create that later. Uh, first thing we'll do, we will uh, you'll have your player character here, 
and we're going to do all the logic for getting our item initially uh, and figuring out what item is in the slot. So we're going to get our uh, player character here. We're going to drag out of there. We're going to get our inventory. Then, oh boy, it's the day of not spilling stuff right. All right. Get inventory. There we go. From our inventory, we're going to get our content. So we want to get all the items in our inventory. Okay, and from there, we're going to grab a for each loop. So we want to cycle through each one of these items in our inventory. Okay, we're going to grab our filled slots array that we made. So this is going to contain all of the items that are actually filled with items and not empty. We're going to get, drag out of there and get a clear. So every time we refresh our inventory, we're going to want to uh, make sure we clear this so we have the, the most up-to-date information from our inventory. Okay. While we're at it here, um, this is where you can make this custom event uh, refresh item slot and drag this in here. Uh, we're going to have to go to a couple of places. We can do that now uh, to actually call this event. First one will be, both will be in the components folder. We're going to go to item data. In our item data, remember this is inside every item in the game. So we're going to get actor of class and that's going to be right after your branch for adding to inventory. And we're going to get our HUD class. After the HUD class, you will drag out of here and you will refresh your inventory slot. Uh, don't worry about the update item log that's going to be in another video. So it should go into from this to destroy actor. All right, uh, so now that means that when we add an item to our inventory, we're going to refresh our item slot. Okay, and just for double redundancy, we're going to go into our inventory. We're gonna to go to our add to inventory function, and we're gonna add it once again at the end of our add to stack and our create new stack. So make sure you get a reference to your HUD class, which you should have already, because we made that in a previous video as well. We'll could drag out of here and just refresh item slot. So doing this twice doesn't doesn't hurt anything. Uh, it just kind of double verifies that we have the correct um, amount of items. So that's not a big deal. So that's all we need to do for that. So back in our HUD class in our item management, um, we're gonna keep on going with this guy here. So we're gonna get a new item, just the single, and we're going to set this with our array element. Okay, and uh, we need to then drag out of our array element down here and we get to break it to get our item ID and our quantity. And we wanted to make sure that we're checking to see if our item inventory has anything in it. So we're going to do a exclamation mark to get not equal. We're going to drag out of here and go make literal name. And we want it to be none. We're just going to leave this exactly how it is. So we're checking to see if our item ID equals none, which it will if it is empty. So we're checking to see if our item ID has literally anything but none. So if it does, then that means we're going to return this as true. And we're going to then uh, add it to our filled item slot. So we'll grab our filled item, or filled item array, pardon me. We are going to drag out a filled slot. We're going to add unique. Drag that in. And then we're going to get, drag it here and get new item. So that is all plugged in. Uh, that is all we need to do. So it'll just add, it'll just sequentially add our new items to this array until it builds our full array of items. Okay, we're going to run through our entire content. Um, and then once we are done that, we'll just drag this down here. Uh, we're going to come out of completed. We're going to get another branch. Do I move this up here? Sure, why not? Make this clean. Uh, we'll get a branch, and for this branch, we need to check our filled item slots. And we need to check and make sure that, sorry, I'm just cleaning this up a bit. If our index is currently valid, so we're going to get is valid index. And we're going to drag in our slot item index. So plug that guy in. So what this is checking, so essentially what happens is... Um, in this video, it won't work. It is, it'll work after the next video. But um, So by default, our slot item index is at slot zero. So if, uh, so if we have no items in our inventory like we don't, um, it's going to recognize that this is not a valid slot, and then it's going to minus... Uh, it's going to minus one, so it's basically not a valid index whatsoever. Um, so that'll get fixed in the next video with our uh, next uh, array item. But uh, basically, 
So we're, if we use this item we're, and we have no items left, we're going to want to be able to go to the like the next, either the next inventory or the last inventory item that we have available. So that's what that is valid index does. Okay, after we have done that, uh, we are going to first, if it is true, then we don't need to do anything and we can just set our new item uh, to be our slot item index and we're going to whoops get our filled slot again as well just copy paste that and get that over here and we're going to drag out a filled slots and get a copy and then slot item index will get drug in and then this will get plugged in here so uh so as this runs through this is going to be set as whatever array item we're currently using and then add that to the unique and then once we're done we just want to set this to whatever our current slot item will be okay for false we're going to get our slot item index and we're going to minus minus to decrease it and just like that so if our index is not valid it's just going to minus it to the the next index down basically okay and if that happens to be minus one we will uh, fix that later so after we set our new item we're going to go to our output uh, except actually we're not going to do that we're going to highlight all this Uh, not this one. You guys won't have that one anyway. Uh, we're going to highlight all that and we're going to right click and we're going to collapse that to a node as well. Okay, this node we will call sets slot index. Because that's what we're doing. And uh, here it is again just to make sure that it's all done correctly. Okay, and we will make sure that we plug a new item into output so that we have an actual output. All right, let's hit compile. Let's go back to item management. And let's start the next part of this. All right, so next we need to get our filled slot. And we need to get a copy again, and then we need to plug in our slot item index once again. And we're gonna break or split the struct pin to get our item ID so that we can get it and get our data table row get data table row and of course this is going to get all the data that we need from whatever item we have so like thumbnail name all that stuff like you per usual um you guys don't need to do this because we'll do this in a later video but i'm gonna plug in my stuff here <laughs> all right so after we get our data table row uh first we'll come out a row item not found um you guys can create this event right here um the custom event of next item array because uh, we're going to come out of here and we're going to call that get next, sorry, next item array. Okay. Uh, so anyways, the data table we're going to add, we're going to add a data table, the same one we've been using for the whole tutorial series. Okay. After that, we're going to get our current item data. We're going to set that as the out item row there. Okay. After that, we will break this to get all of our stuff. And we need to now do our image. So let's get our quick use item inventory slot. We're gonna get our item image, image. And we're going to set brush from texture like we've done before. Thumbnail. Okay, uh, next we will set our uh, I think it's set up a quick use item again. We'll just hit a reroute node here. The item cooldown bar. That's what we want. You know what? This is going to get messy, so let's get rid of that. Let's just uh, copy paste. Bring this down here. Set. Pardon me. Item cooldown bar. Okay, we're going to set style. You're probably wondering why it's way down there. Well, this is one of the most annoying nodes I've had to deal with in a, in a, in a, in a hot minute. So we're going to split this. It's going to bring these up. You need to split background image and fill image. And the reason for that is because the background image doesn't like to behave itself. So in terms of the um, stuff we actually need to do, we just need to drag thumbnail into style, fill, image, image. 
and that will set our cooldown bar's image and make sure that it's being drawn as an image. As you can see, the background um, image is also being drawn as an image, but we don't want that or else it's just going to draw a white box behind our round image. Uh, so we're going to hit none, and then this is really annoying. If you hit compile, you'll actually get uh, this style background image image pin is invalid. So that's talking about this. Like, if you look, it says select asset, so there's nothing actually in it, but it thinks it is, because I had this as draw as image before. So we need to open that, select the apple, and then open it again and just select none just to clear it, and then that'll get rid of this error. Alrighty. Next, uh, we need to set our text for the number of items we have, or hide it if it's less or greater than one. So first things, we'll uh, drag out of here, push B to get a branch. And then we will get, we'll just copy, whoops, where is it? Right here it is. We will copy this and come over here and we'll paste it. Okay, and we're gonna drag out a quantity and wanna check if it is less than or equal to one. Drag that in there, drag that over here, something like that. All right, if it is less than or greater, pardon me, if it is less than or equal to one, that means that we only have one item or zero, so we don't want to see that number thing with our used items. So we're going to uh, quick use item slot. We're going to get our item number, number of items overlay. And then we will set visibility to hidden. Drag that in there. And then we will literally just copy this and paste this down here. Um, except if we have more than one item, that means we have obviously two or higher, so uh, we want this to be not hit testable self and all children, and then we're going to want to get our items use slot again, and we're going to want to set, yeah, I'll say get number of items, so we want to get that text from that, and then we're going to set text. Just like that. Uh, so for the text, we'll drag out of here, and we'll hit format text. And we're going to do the weird brackets that are between the P and the slash key above the enter. Just like that. And we're going to type in NO for number. And then we can drag our quantity in here. So now we're going to set this text as the number of quantity of the items left. All right, and to test it out here, we will hit play. And nothing will happen because we have nothing in our inventory. But if we pick something up, we should should see something in there uh now i like i said this is a, a re-record so um i can actually cycle through all my items so you guys can see what we're going to do in the next video but you guys will be stuck on just the this main first item that you pick up um, but we will be able to do this in the next video and it's gonna be awesome we can go through all of our items and then at the, uh, when it's all said and done we can use our items and gain some health back and uh yeah looking forward to teaching you guys that and i uh, will see you in the next video okay bye